Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will review a technique of integration known as the integration by parts. A very common mistake people make when integrating a uh, product of two functions, say f of x times g of x, the problem, the, the, the one fundamental mistake people make is that they treat this as a product of two integrals. So what they do is they take the integral of f of x and multiply it by the integral, integral of g of x. Now th this is obviously not going to get us what we want. It's not the right way to go about this. So how do we proceed when we're given a function, a product a function that is a product of two functions. Well, since this is a video about integration integration by parts, I'm pretty sure you already know what the answer is to that. We use the integration by parts. So, in order to understand this technique, let's recall first what the product rule is. Remember that the product rule is given a function that is a product of two functions, the derivative is equal to the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So this is known as the product rule. Now by taking the indefinite integral of both sides of the equation we get this. So let's take the indefinite integral of both sides. Uh, this could be writ rewritten as fx g of x is equal to the integral of fx g prime of x dx plus the integral of gx f prime of x dx. And that could be rewritten as uh, as this, the integral of f x g prime of x dx is equal to f x g x plus, or sorry, minus the integral of g x f prime of x dx. So this is our general formula of the integration of parts. Notice on this left side, we are going to want to get our, whatever uh, function we're given, we want to give it, get it into the form of this left side here. So we got fx g prime of x dx. And I'll explain that a little uh, further here in a minute. So this is our general formula, like I stated, but we're probably more, uh, familiar with seeing it in this format. Say we take u and define u as a substitute u as f of x and then we also have v and we'll substitute that for g of x. So taking the derivatives of that we get du is equal to uh, f prime of x dx and dv is equal to g prime of x dx. So this general formula can be rewritten as the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. So by substitution this is what we get as our general formula. So once again we're going to get be given a, a product of two functions and we want to substitute or determine how we can substitute it so we can get it in the form u dv. So the process of integration by parts can be broken down into four distinct steps. So the process, there's four steps. So the first step is to, if we're given a, a product of two functions and asked to integrate it, the first step is we want, it to, we want to get it in the form fx g 
x dx. And what we want to do in this in this first step is to clearly define what g sub x is and clearly define what gx is. So we want to define f of x and gx. The next thing we want to do is uh, introduce the interme intermediary functions. So u and v. We want to figure out what, uh, how we're going to break this function up so we can um, substitute the values u and uh, v. So what we do is in step two is define u is equal to f of x and we define dv because if you recall our our uh, original equation our general formula is u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. So dv is going to be gx dx. So this is u and this is going to be dv. So then we need to find out, uh, determine du, which is going to be equal f prime of x dx and u or v, which is going to be equal to the integral of gx dx. So that's our second step. Just define these variables or these uh, substitutions right here. Now step number three is we want to plug these values into our general formula. So we got the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. And then finally to uh, get our final answer we want to just our final step is just to take care of this final integral. Get that out of the way and then we'll come up with one solid value here on the right side of the equation. So the fourth step is just take care of the integral of v du. Now the first problem one faces when dealing with this technique or these four steps is the choice that we encounter in step two. This is where a problem may occur. Now there is no general rule to follow. It is truly a matter of experience. Now we may be right or wrong when we, uh, when we define uh, the function for u and define the uh, function for dv. We might be right or wrong, but we won't find out until we get to this third step. Um, and if the third step isn't uh, solvable, if uh, we're not able to determine an answer, then our guess was obviously wrong and we just go back to step two and redefine uh, functions for the substitutions. So let's uh, quickly run through an example here. Let's say that we uh, have a function x sine of x and we're asked to find the integral x sine of x d sub x d of x. So first thing we need to do is define u and dv. So in this case this x is going to be u and dv is going to be sine x dx. Now du is just going to be dx because uh, x uh, int or differentiates to uh, 1. The derivative of x is 1. And uh, v is going to be the integral of sine x dx which is equal to negative cosine of x. Now we can just uh, plug that these. This, we're on step 3. This is going to uh, just plug these this information into our equation. So we got x, our general formula, sine x dx is equal to x negative cosine x minus the integral of negative cosine x dx. Now just uh, determining what this integral equals, that is equal to sine 
x plus c. So plugging in, bringing this value down, we get negative x cosine x minus sine x plus c. So that is the indefinite integral of x sine x. So, so far we've only considered indefinite integrals. However, we can solve definite integrals as well. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say that we want to determine the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared e to the x dx. Since a derivative or the integral of e, e, e to the x leads to the same function, it will not matter whether we do one operation or the other. Therefore, we concentrate on the other function, x squared. Clearly, if we integrate, we will increase the power. So this suggests that we should di differentiate x squared and integrate e to the x. So therefore, we, we define x squared as u and we define dv as e to the x dx. So we got u is equal to x squared, dv is equal to e x to the dx, and now du is going to be 2x dx, and v is going to be e to the x. So plugging that into our uh, general formula, of integration by parts, we get that the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared e to the x dx is equal to x squared e to the x 0 to 1 minus the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x e to the x dx. Now it's clear that uh, this new integral right here is not easy, easily, easily solvable. So we need to use the integration by parts again and add that result to our original equation here. So let's go ahead and do integration of parts on this integral. Let's choose u is equal to, let's take, uh, we'll take two out of the picture since that's a constant. So we'll take u is equal to x and dv is equal to ex dx which makes du equal to dx and uh, v equal to ex e to the x so now plugging that into um, our uh, integration by parts general formula we find that the integral from 0 to 1 of x e x, and since we pulled 2 out, is equal to 2 times uh, x e to the x from 0 to 1 minus e raised to the x from 0 to 1. So now we, uh, we solved for our integral, and all we need to do now is bring that back into our original equation here and combine it all and we get that the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus e to the x dx is equal to x squared e to the x 0 1 minus 2 times x e to the x from 0, 1 minus 2 e to the x from 0, 1. And since this is a definite integral, we're going to get a number. And we, so we just plug in our numbers and come out as our final answer. Our integral is uh, e minus 2. So that's uh, how you determine a uh, definite integral using the integration by parts. Once again, we're getting a single number if it's a definite, 
and then we're getting a an equation or a function if it is a indefinite interval. So that's all I got for you for the integration by parts. If you guys have any questions, hop on over to engineeringtrainingexam.com. Check out some more videos. Give me some suggestions, feedback. Um, once again, I'm here to help. So if you have any uh, questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Sign up for my free EIT preparation boot camp and uh, get yourself on the road to dominating this exam. So until next time, we'll be talking soon. Take care. Bye.